Um, so thank you all for being part of this webinar today. Um, it is going to be presented by Chuck Dinsmore, um, who is a business development expert and provides data-driven marketing insights for small businesses as well as multi-million dollar companies. Um, he founded Data Click Market Intelligence in 2014. Uh, it's also going to be hosted by Derek Lee of Exact Marketing, which is another marketing company. Um, and DataClick is a certified LGBTB, and Exact Marketing is in the process of getting certified. So they are your fellow well, to do that, um, LGBT businesses. Hello, everyone, and glad you could make it today. Uh, I don't know where you guys all are in the country, but we're in sunny South Florida. We just got through our worst winter ever. I think the temperature got down to 56 degrees. So uh, anyway, not to make you jealous. Uh, before we get started, um, I'd like to ask you to find the chat icon on the right-hand side of your screen because I'm going to ask you a couple questions as we go. The very first one is going to be, what industry are you in? So if you want to, you can go in and start answering that. That will help us guide the discussion a little bit better as we go through this. So let's, uh, let's move forward, tell you a little bit about us. Uh, Katie did really well about telling you who I am. and. Uh, who Derek is. You guys may know Derek from uh, his sister company, ABD, who, who is a member of NJLCC. Um, so he's decided to put his energy uh, back in exact marketing, which is a 14-year-old company. And uh, we've partnered up because he uses DataClick's technology with all of his clients. And, and you'll understand why as we get through this. So let's get started. Marketing Ten years ago was pretty simple. If you wanted to invest some money in your in advertising your business, you just decided, okay, I've got this much to invest. I'm going to put it in the newspaper or television or direct mail or maybe even the Yellow Pages, if anyone remembers what that is. Uh, we actually got Yellow Pages in our office last week. We use it as a doorstop because the door won't stay open very well. But anyway... Today, though, it's much, much more confusing. There's so much going on out there. Things change daily, frequently. How can we even keep up? You've got traditional marketing and you've got digital marketing. And, and let me just take an aside a minute and tell you that most of you think digital marketing is SEO and social media. It is so much more than that. Digital marketing includes digital display. It includes your entire online presence. And it's even moving into more traditional areas such as television. We now have, have uh, directed television, which is deliverable digital messages directly into the set-top box. So there's a lot going on in digital, and if you don't stay on top of it, you risk getting left behind. The biggest challenge, though, is that audiences everywhere are very tough. It's very difficult to keep their attention. In fact, I just read that the average attention span of a goldfish is 12 seconds. The average attention span of today's audience is 9 seconds. We don't even have the attention span of a goldfish. It's very expensive to get someone's attention. It's very difficult to keep their attention. Marketing is constantly changing. Its existing audiences are changing. Platforms are constantly changing. The rules are changing. And if you don't keep up, again, you're going to get left behind. So, um, again, if you haven't done it yet, go on and put your industry in so we can take a look and maybe talk a little bit about it as we go through this. And we are going to open up for questions at the end, by the way. Derek is going to be available to give you the, the point of view from an agency and marketing expert, and I'm going to give you the point of view from a data expert. So back to the presentation. No wonder we're struggling. You guys are being pulled in every different direction. Content, design, keywords, backlinks, strategy. I bet you didn't even think about that when you got into your business. You got into your business because you're passionate about what you do. and you didn't want to spend time doing all this other stuff. You didn't want to spend time doing web design, unless, of course, that's your business. You didn't want to spend time coming up with creative and content. You wanted to spend time doing what you got in business to do, whether it's a restaurant, you want to cook, you want to serve people, retail, you want to build your customer base and sell your product. But I'm going to tell you something that's going to scare you about social media in particular. In 2013, if you posted something on your Facebook page, 
about 16 percent of, of the people would see it that's called organic you didn't have to pay for anything you just posted it on your business page in 2014 that dropped to five percent and in 2015 it dropped to one percent because facebook got smart and what that one percent is is if you post something on your page only the people who are currently online on your page will see it now facebook will make sure everyone else sees it if you pay a nice fee but they figured out how to monetize themselves and it's at your expense when we pulled other marketers we found out that businesses say 91 percent of them have benefited from their social presence online it's increased their exposure but what does that really mean when 51 percent only say they've improved sales because they can't measure it and i think the 51 percent is probably inflated as well 42% of marketers say they're actually able to measure an ROI. So we need help. We're confused. We're falling behind. We don't know who to trust, and we're making mistakes. And I'm going to show you how to be smart about your marketing. One other quick question, if you've got a, a moment while I keep talking, if you could answer this question on the chat icon, what is the, your number one marketing problem? What is it that keeps you up at night about your marketing? So if you'll put that in for us, we'll see we, if we can address that as we go as well. We have a new 80-20 rule in marketing. Most of you, most marketers, spend 80% of their time choosing their media, choosing where they're going to put their dollars, whether it's traditional media or digital. They spend about 10% of their time figuring out the message they're going to put into their, their marketing, 7% deciding on where they're going to... to uh, advertise and 3% actually thinking about who they want to target. It needs to be the other way around. 80% of your time needs to be spent on figuring out who you're going to target and the rest will fall into place. So let's talk about that. How do you keep up? The most successful businesses base their marketing on valid information that is customized and analyzed for their situation. You would do better to focus on a specific segment. Now, I know that's counterintuitive. What most marketers will do, or most business owners will do, is they will say, I need to get the most bang from my buck. I'm going to spend my money in a place that's going to get the most exposure to the most people. But I'll tell you a fallacy to that. If you remember, maybe if you remember back to your marketing classes in school, they say that it takes three exposures just to get someone's attention. So if you spread your marketing dollars out, you're never going to get three exposures. But I want to go one step further. We're a partner with Nielsen, the ratings agency that tracks television usage. The new number with this digital age that it takes before they even know you exist is 17 exposures. 17 exposures before they know you exist. So if you're doing traditional marketing such as television or direct mail, you've got to hit these people 17 times or else you risk them not even hearing, not even getting your message. So you need to know before you go into your marketing strategy, who are your best customers, where your prospects are located, what are their lifestyle preferences, and how to reach them. This is called market segmentation. It takes into account the geographic location, so you need to know where you're going to be marketing, the demographic location, knowing the basic criteria of your population, behavioral location, how do, how do they respond, what, what is their behaviors, and then psychographic information, so who are they specifically, what are their trigger points, what messaging will work with them. The best information you have to start with, though, is your own customer data. And let me show you how DataClick uses that. Lifestyle segmentation was developed over 40 years ago, but one of the leading uh, developers is Experian. Experian is one of the world's largest consumer reporting agencies. You guys know them as the Credit Bureau. And think about it. Every purchase you make, every application you make for credit, car you buy, house you buy, Experian knows about it. They have a wealth of information and they've taken that information and they've put it together with demographic information from the US Census, with information from surveys that they've done, with information that they've they've shared with other companies such as Nielsen and they've created a product called Mosaic. What Mosaic does is takes over 800 data points on every US household and breaks it down and combines it into habits and lifestyles yielding 71 unique clusters. So there's 71 groups in the US. 
And we'll get into what the codes mean in just a minute, but a, a group of A1, for example, in Miami is exactly the same as an A1 in Seattle, is the same as an A1 in St. Louis. So once we get, once we know your cluster, we know how to market to you. The clusters basically fall into groups. The groups on this scale you see run from high income to low income, top to bottom, and young to old, left to right, so they kind of group together that way. The other high level demographics include education, rent or own, household size, if they have children or not, and uh, income. So this is a segmentation chart. This is an example of the kind of data that we produce. Now this is a, a real life situation. This is a theater company in South Florida. And what we did is we took their information, their customer list, and we looked up what each of their customers' uh, lifestyle code was. Those are the codes on the left and we appended it to their files so that they could understand what their customers were like. And what happened is, is 20, uh, 26%, I'm sorry, 52%, almost 52% of their customers fall into five categories. And we see this across the board. About half of your customers will fall into five out of the 71, and about 80% of your customers will fall into 14. In this case, it was 12 different groups. But one of the things I want to show you about this is how to read this chart. If you look on the far right side, that's the index. 100 is average, so anything above 100 is higher than average. The next two columns from the right, the list households and the list penetration, is the actual list of the performing company, the theater company, and what percentage of their list is made up by that code. So the top line are our E19s, which are full pocket empty nest. A lot of you out there are E19s. 26% of this list is E19, but if you look at the first two columns, there are 36,000 households in the defined market area. Only 4.9% of the market are E19s, therefore they're getting their unfair share of E19s at this theater company. So they're actually indexing at 533, which means they're 5.3 times more likely to get an E19 than the prevalence in the general population. So that's pretty much how you would read the chart. I'm not going to go through each one, but I'm going to show you what it means. So again, these top five make up 51%. The next seven make up 22%. So 73% of their customer base falls into these 12 categories. Of those top fives, the commonalities are they're empty nesters, they're wealthy, upscale, upper middle class. There are a couple singles, boomers, and retirees in there, both suburban and in town. This is the very top one, the E19. When we do this analysis, it generates a summary report of each of the categories. So in this case, this, this category is called full pockets, empty nests. Uh, just a quick Quick features on the left, they're empty nesters, highly educated city dwellers, environmental advocates, well-traveled, fit, fitness-minded. On the far right side, you'll see how they respond to media. So the top left one in, in that media section is direct mail. They index above 100 for direct mail, so they, that's very effective with them. But they're indexing below 100 on digital, uh, mobile digital, and on their computers but they're indexing above 100 at 123 on email. So this, this profile, my point is, is that it tells you what's the best marketing media channel to hit these targets with. In the center, you'll see a breakdown of more information about the groups, whether or not they're a homeowner, what their income level is, what their family size is. In this case, E19s are typically empty nesters, so they have one person in the household, ages 51 to 65. Uh, technology adoption on the lower right-hand side, they tend to be above average. They're apprentices. They're learning. Uh, again, they're, they're slow to, to adopt, but they're, they're moving forward, and we expect to see the mobile numbers move up in this category. Just to take a quick look at the bottom seven on our, our case study here, younger singles, couples, boomers, and retirees, urban and suburban lifestyles, upscale younger and mid to downsize, downscale older. They balance work, kids, and leisure or retirement. This is their chart here. You can see that, that in particular Q62s, which are retirees over 76, uh, they like leisure, they're brand loyal, they like to take cruises. Uh, if you look on the far right side, they do not ad adopt technology at all. They're novices. Uh, they do respond well to traditional media, such as direct mail. No, they don't respond well to email. They don't really respond well to TV and radio because they're too busy on their cruises and playing golf. 
Um, but you can take a look at, at the demographics and the information in the middle chart and learn a little bit more about them. Typically homeowners on a retirement income, 35 to 50,000. So if you knew this information about your customers, you can turn around and get the same information in your market area. This is, the, this is the next step, is figuring out where you can find more people like your top customers. In this case, again, this is the, the theater company. The purple dots represent their E19, so they know where their customers currently live. Uh, the, the background colors are a heat map that show them where their potential customers are. Now, this takes all 12 of those categories and combines them. Uh, just to give you a little bit of direction here, the blue area to the right is the Atlantic Ocean. This is Florida. Uh, so this is the coastline you see. Uh, the east side, the right-hand side, is where most of their market is. The green star is where the theater is located. So in this case, the darker red areas are where the higher concentrations of their target population are. So now they can figure out exactly where to market. These uh, hexagons each represent about a half mile across. Now we take a comparison uh, and look actually at the zip codes. If they're marketing by zip code, it would tell them to market in those orange areas and red areas, which is a pretty big swath. But if we go back and look at the heat map here, you can see that really only about half of the zip codes are their target. So if they were marketing based on zip code alone, they would be wasting a whole lot of money in their direct mail and uh, their advertising if they're trying to reach those areas. So again, in this analysis, looking at all 12 of those segments, they have a target of 196,000 households in that eastern side of the city. So uh, of course they're not going to market to that many people, but it gives them a rich, rich place to start to narrow down their target. The next step in marketing using data is now we know who your customers are, pretty much why they choose you, we know where they're located, but let's talk about the psychology. There are 11 different media profiles, that, uh, marketing profiles that we have. Uh, and in this case, this one is uh, by American, which ranked pretty high with most of the segments, not with the E19s, but with the rest of them. So a by American type household is someone who is a traditionalist. They like American-made products. They, they like security, honor, honor and dignity. They respect institutions. They respect your reputation. They want to work with someone who's been in business a while. They're traditionalists. They're also prudent shoppers, which means they like discounts. So if you were performing messages for this, if you were developing your message on the right-hand side, you would emphasize a Made in America, you would emphasize the quality, you would offer local representation if you have it, you would focus on your reputation and how long you've been in business and communicate your value proposition, what's the value they're getting. You can even use incentive offers. Now I'll give you a, a contrast to this. The E19, which follows a lot of these things, they actually index higher on our VIP programs, which means they're not interested in discounts as much as they're interested in VIP treatment. They want to be a member of a club or feel made, they're, like they're special, so make them feel special. So if you knew the difference between the two, you could tailor your marketing. Then the last part, the fourth part, is finally the media. Now that you know who your customer is, where they're located, and what messaging will work, what their hot buttons are, now you can look at what media works best with them. Now these are using index numbers again, and they're from low to high, so anything above 100 means that it indexes well. So about in the middle is direct mail at 102, and then up from there is your traditionals, your newspaper, radio. And you would expect that because in our example here, these are generally people that are over 50. They're more traditionalists, and so they're going to respond to traditional media. But as you move up, you also see email mobile uh, almost the second from the top. This is interesting because the, the age group we're talking about, the 50 to 65, they don't respond well to emails on their computer because they live on their mobile phones, but they will respond to emails on their mobile phones. So let's take and break that down a little bit more. We break this into two areas, again, digital media and traditional. So looking at digital in our target group that we've been talking about, you can see they're generally below average on mobile, 
but they are above average on, uh, if you drop down to the left side where it says website, they're above average on e-teller sites and news websites. Again, they're traditionalists, so they're going to look at look for their news online since newspapers are going out of business and they can't get their hands on them. Uh, then they have e-teller sites such as Amazon and discount sites. They're on there a lot. On the right-hand side, you'll see that they're below average for email responsiveness, but again, high on mobile email because they're checking their emails constantly on their phone. Below average on all social media except for Facebook. Now that's kind of weird, but it's because even though this group is aging, they are adopting the technology fast because their grandkids are on Facebook and this is the only way they can keep up with them. Let's look at traditional media. Again, this is an older crowd we're looking at in our sample, so you would expect to see above average rankings on almost all of the traditional media, direct mail, radio, television, and newspaper. But we even go as far to break down the newspaper into the sections. They're front page readers, financial, entertainment, but they're not very big on the editorial section because they don't care, they've seen it all. The food section, they don't have time, they're too busy on the cruises where they have someone else cook for them. So you can see there's a lot of rich information that this customer, this business has about their customers that will help them tailor their marketing strategy to be able to reach the customers that they need to be reaching. So now we know how to identify our best customers, why they choose us, locating where the prospects are so we not only know where our customers are but we know where our potential customers are so we know where to target them. We can develop our messaging to make sure that it relates specifically to their lifestyle because if we're not speaking their language, they're not going to listen to us. And then we can choose the media that they choose. We can pick the media that resonates with them more often. So how can you use this? You can, do, you can go to the Experian website. Experian is our partner. We're a premier partner with them. And you can go to the Experian website and look up small business or small business portal, and it will give you a lot more ed education on how to use lifestyle segmentation in your marketing. They even have some tools in there to help you determine what segments your customers fit into. We also have uh, DataClick. This is what we do. We actually do a full report and analysis similar to what you've just seen, except we shorten this one in the interest of time. But we do a full report and analysis that tells using your customer database, or if you don't have one, we have preset profiles for certain industries. And we will give you the information, and you can. it includes consulting to help you understand how to use it and develop your own marketing strategy. And you can even purchase lists uh, at that point based on what the outcome is, what, based on what your profile is, to either market direct mail or digitally. And then we also have a, uh, a new product that we've launched called our Customer Intelligence Academy. It's a do-it-yourself solution. It's a five-week course where you can learn how to do it yourself, learn everything you possibly wanted to know about lifestyle segmentation marketing. It includes an hourly webinar every week live with the experts. We record everything. And one of the things it does is it really gives you access to all of this information for a full year. So even if you can't make one of the meetings, we record them, you can, you can get them yourself. You get full training. Uh, there's an FAQ sec section where you can talk to your fellow students and, and share stories and information. Also, the experts will chime in on that and give you answers. Uh, if you do decide that you want to, to do one of our reports after that, all of our students get $1,000 off of the report. The report's normally four grand. Uh, and then there's a lot more extras in there. Once you complete it, you'll be able to use your own data to create and execute your own lifestyle segmentation strategy generate more effective target marketing campaigns and improve your efficiency and that's what's most important is knowing that your marketing is working. We've got customers that we've worked with where uh, in direct mail where we've taken their response rates up to five times better than what they were getting just using zip code targeting. We are offering you guys a $50 off the course. The course is $495 so there's $50 off with NGLCC 50. That's good until uh, the end of June. Our next course doesn't start until uh, June 13th, but uh, I talked to my business partner and if we get enough participants, we'll do one just for NGLCC, so it would be specific to NGLCC on May 1st, but we'd have to get 10 participants to do it. So if you're interested, you can certainly go to our website and find out more. 
Uh, we'd like to offer you guys a free copy of the Experian handbook. It's a 180-page handbook that goes into much more detail about each of the segments. You can read it to help yourself go to sleep at night, or if you want to find out what what your category is, you can try to find yourself amongst the pages. You can also go to our website, uh, dataclick.com, and it will and there's a uh, exercise on there that you can find out your own category on there as well. We did create a special page just for NGLCC. It's dataclick.com forward slash NGLCC, which gives you the opportunity to request your copy of this book and also get a copy of today's uh, webinar. Uh, but I understand it's also going to be on the NGLCC website. But we will send you information as well if you just share your email address with us then. Um, so if you'd like to learn more, go to the website. We have helpful links on our site, all kinds of information that you can train yourself. Uh, the discount code is available on the NGLCC page of our website. And uh, so what I'd like to do now is bring Derek back on with me. He's sitting right next to me and take your questions <laughs> because I'm the data guy. Sometimes I get real geeky and I talk about things that are that are kind of hard to follow and understand, but Derek's the execution guy. He's He's got a marketing company and he's been on your side working directly with the, the uh, business owners and advertisers and they use our data and our processes with all of their clients. So we'd like to open it up now to take your questions, make sure you unmute yourself before you ask, but I will ask that you remute yourself after you ask your question so we get, don't get too much interference. So ROI seems to be the biggest. So we have a couple questions that have popped up. I'll, I'll address those while you guys are, are thinking. One is uh, targeting B2B clients. Um, this works better with B2C clients, but we do have a B2B solution. It is not as tailored as this, so it takes a little bit more uh, consulting time, but if you're interested in doing that, we do produce similar profiles that will help you target specific businesses. Just reach out to us and we'll be happy to talk to you more about that. Um, where will I have the best ROI? Well, that depends on your customer base because you're, one of the things that the analysis will show you is what media is best for your customer profile. So once you know your customer profile, then you can decide where you want to invest your marketing dollars to get the better return. We do see a high return in digital, and this information can be used in digital campaigns. And when I say digital, once again, I don't mean just social media and SEO, but also include digital display. Um, we can target specific IPs and households based on your profile. So you would get a really high ROI on digital. Um, this also works with Facebook when you're doing your ad manager and profiling. Uh, reach out to us. We're able to set up your profile to where you can choose it in your ad manager. Um, so again, digital tends to yield more direct mail. It's very responsive, however, depending on your target population. Um, if I can, if I can jump in for a second, uh, Nick asked a great question about uh, marketing ROI and um, what kind of budget to put towards your digital media. Um, Nick, the the way that the reason that we use DataClick to power uh, everything that we do is because um, once you have that target um, and you have that target available to you for your your customer base, you should take a certain percentage of your. Uh, projected revenue to come up with a marketing budget. And so that's a question that um, certainly could be answered after uh, finding out who your target is, but it's based on revenue projections. Thank you very much. All right, any other questions you guys have? I, we got a couple more on another one here. that we'll put in here. Will the CIA program be beneficial for B2B? Will the CIA program be beneficial for B2B? Um, Again, it's tailored for B2C. However, we've had students go through it that are B2B and got a lot out of it. Uh, we have one student in particular who owns a, uh, a Minuteman Press franchise, and uh, she got a whole lot out of it. And one of, the, one of the things we do when you're in the course is we spend some one-on-one -on -one time with you to help you with that and help give you a plan to do B2B. And then what is this one? That is, how do I keep my marketing consistently fresh and over so many channels? That's from Irwin. So how do you keep marketing fresh over so many channels? Do you want to take that? 
Sure. Because <laughs> I, I mean, the data will tell you what channels to use, but you have to talk about freshness. I think, I think that's the, the key um, here, Erwin. Um, we historically followed the same principle that every other agency did and every other company did in terms of just, just generally looking at marketing. And that was we took a broad generalization of who we thought our target customers were, and then we tried to reach as many people as we could, cast as wide a net as we could on as many pr uh, channels as we could. And we found historically that that's just not effective. So again, this boils down to finding the target first, taking that approach versus the message and, and, and the location, and then just ta tailoring it down to the specific channels that make sense. So, if, you know, uh, a, good, a good barometer would be, for example, when you saw the Q65s, uh, as an example, um, it, during the um, presentation, you know, ad pr or ads on Facebook are not going to be effective with that particular group. So have understanding who your target is will help you just kind of pare down what channels to be on. And one of the things, too, just to piggyback on that, in our example we used in here, this was a, a theater company, and uh, typically you see that the people that like to go to the theater are an older crowd with a more expendable income. So, but this works on any age group. I mean, we've, we've worked with uh, national uh, athletic chains. There's a gym that, that we worked with, and their target market is 18 to 30. So, uh, you know, once we determine who it is, we're able to find more customers for them. And more importantly, in this case, what they were looking for locations to open up new uh, outlets. So they wanted to know where their targets were located so they could stick a location in the middle of it and it will help them determine what their projected revenue would be from that market. So again, you should focus on not spreading yourself so thin that you can't get the message across those 17 times, which is a scary number. But even, it does take a lot more than three. In some, mar in some channels it takes 10 or 11. In digital it definitely takes more than 17. So it just depends on what your profile shows and where you need to be marketing. And then focus on that so that you can get the repetition. Repetition is the key here. You've got to to narrow down your focus so that you've got enough of your budget left to hit them multiple times. All right, so, um, that's it. All right, so thank you. That's all uh, I have. If anyone, if no one has any more questions, Katie, I guess we can switch back to you. Yeah, perfect. Um, actually, I guess we just got one more question, if you want to go ahead and answer that, and then I can take over from uh, Rob. So the question was, would you have a solution to find a consumer, find consumers in a short time frame? Um, he's often tasked to find specific targets for focus group, focus group nationally with very specific criteria. Um, typically, we can turn around a target in 48 hours. So yes, we can do it in a very short time frame. We have uh, multiple ways that we can um, can target can filter it like I said we have over 800 data points on every single uh, US adult and some of them up to 3,000 data points so we would simply put the filters on and, and generate the target list for you wonderful all right well thank you so much for everyone who attended this webinar thank you so much to Chuck and Derek I certainly learned a lot um, that was a fabulous presentation so I appreciate that very much uh, I will send around the recorded version of this presentation along with anything else that um, Chuck and Derek would like me to send out to all the attendees. Um, and thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and feel free to follow up with me if you have any questions. Um, if you have Chuck's information or Derek's information, feel free to follow up with them and I can certainly make that connection for you as well. Thank you all and have a wonderful rest of the day. Thank you. Thanks.